Welcome back to It's a Miracle. A busy crosswalk, a young boy racing home from school and a speeding vehicle. It's a scenario for a disaster and the perfect moment for a miracle to happen. No one can predict when tragedy will strike. It can come at any moment. Kit Tucker of Kingston, Ontario was about to discover this as she prepared for her three sons to arrive home from school. Kit always insisted the boys follow a daily routine. They would meet each other at the baseball diamond right outside the school. And when all three of them were together, they were instructed to walk home together because of safety factors and things like that. But even this daily routine could not prevent the tragic accident that was about to happen. The three brothers were extremely close, although each of them had his own distinct personality. Ryan is quiet and tends to be studious. Paul is a serious-minded boy. James was more high-spirited, not so much people-oriented as goal-oriented. As the boys crossed the field toward home, James moved ahead of Ryan and Paul. Me and Ryan, my little brother, got into just a small bickering argument, and James decided he didn't want to hear, so he just ran ahead. As James ran toward the road, Paul suddenly realized the danger his brother was headed for. I could see out of the corner of my eye the van coming fast down the hill, right towards, and I could almost tell that it was going to hit him. James, watch out! James did not hear his brother's urgent scream in time, and the van struck him at over 25 miles per hour as he ran into the crosswalk. I ran over to him, and I felt that I needed to get him off the road before any other cars came. A woman came over telling me not to move him, not to pick him up, because he could have had a broken back or something, and it would have just paralyzed him. Moments later, a Canadian military officer who served with James's father arrived on the scene. He recognized the boy and ran to alert his mother. Call 911. Call 911. Kit Tucker received the devastating news. I went to the front door, and a man burst through the door and said, are you Mrs. Tucker? Your son's been hit by a car. He was hit by a car. Oh, my God. I thought what every mother would think. Who is it, and is he dead, and how badly injured is he? Rushing to the scene, Kit still had no idea which of her sons had been struck by the vehicle. I was expecting it to be Ryan, because Ryan would be the youngest, and I would think that was something the youngest child would do. I was surprised that it was James. I was filled with compassion when I looked at him and saw him lying on the ground. And he was conscious at that point, and I spoke right to him as soon as I saw him. I said, you're going to be all right, you're fine, Mommy's here. He was comforted by that. I love you, honey. Everything's going to be all right. Within minutes, paramedics arrived to tend to the injured boy. James's father, Len Tucker, had been summoned from the nearby army base. When I knelt down beside James, it's my okay. first feelings were anger. Who could do this? And why? Why him? I think she took one look at me, and she could see that I was angry. She put her hand on my shoulder and said, it's OK. No, he's OK. He's OK. Everything's going to be OK. James was rushed to a local hospital. The direct impact by the speeding vehicle would almost certainly have caused massive head injuries. But miraculously, the only injuries that doctors could find were a few broken teeth. They had done x-rays, they had tested him. They couldn't really find anything wrong with him at all, except for his teeth that he needed to see a dentist. A few hours later, James was released from the hospital. That night, with her son safely at home, Kit reflected on the incredible miracle that had happened that day how her son had survived a major car impact with only a few broken teeth. Later, as she tucked Paul into bed, she discovered the miracle was even more incredible than she'd ever imagined. I was concerned about how they felt uh, about the accident, and Paul said he hadn't really been worried because there had been another boy. Another boy? Yeah. What, what other boy? and that he felt that he was the one that was hit. Paul's story about another boy being hit by the van seemed impossible, but she urged him to tell her exactly what he'd seen. He disappeared. I saw the van. And 
then I saw another boy kind of translucent. He took the impact of the van. It protected him from getting injured on the side where the van hit him. And he got all his injuries from hitting the road, not any from the van. So the other boy protected him as his guardian angel. When Paul was talking to me, he's a very straightforward child. He, he doesn't make up tales. Having been brought up with the idea of guardian angels, I think it clicked instantly. Something in me just said, this is a miracle, this is miraculous. This is something that is extraordinary, supernatural. I believe the other boy was James's guardian angel that God had sent to protect him from getting injured. Today, the Tuckers spend their time enjoying their children, knowing that a miracle has enriched their lives. As for James, he's fully recovered, thanks to the mysterious intervention of the other boy. I believe that the appearance of the other boy was a miracle. I think it was a miracle because I didn't sustain any injuries from the blow. I never had any broken bones, and I think any other person without a guardian angel would have uh, got a, a few injuries and broken bones. Whether you believe in guardian angels or not, James is living proof that sometimes a tragedy can be miraculously prevented, although we may never know why.